guys. What are you doing in my kitchen cabinet? Welcome back to my channel. Happy Monday. I hope you're all having a great start to the week and welcome to my tiny kitchen. So today I wanted to share with you some just meal prep ideas that I um, have for making things that are like healthy, delicious and, and fairly easy to make. Um, I started meal prepping again recently. It was something that I started doing when I went vegan a few years ago and it really kind of helped me to stay on track with my diet, also help save money and just help me save time because it wasn't something that I had to think about, you know, um, during the week. But of course, I fell off my <laughs> vegan diet and that's a whole other story and let me know if you want to hear more about my vegan experience below. But now I mostly eat plant-based and and now my schedule is very crazy, so a lot of the times I I order in a lot, but I've now recently started introducing more like no prepping again. But I personally like things to be eat things as fresh as possible, so I mostly meal prep meal prep for like half the week or most of the week, like five days or so at most. But you know, then I allow myself room to you know at that point because I'm still very busy to order out, go out, um, or maybe make something fresh that day. But yeah, I just wanted to share with you today just a quick recipe. Most of the things um, I come up with are just like, they're just inspiration that comes to me the day of, the week of, usually the day of, and I just go with it. I think you really kind of have to just trust your gut and your taste buds and, and not be afraid to, you know, experiment in the kitchen. So stay tuned. Okay, so as you can see, we have a lot, a ton of groceries here. I always get too excited and say that I am only going to buy a few things and then I end up buying a whole bunch of things here. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of vegetables and some fruits. I do have a piece of salmon that we're making today. I pretty much try to eat mostly plant-based or kind of vegan but I sometimes mix it up with some fish I very rarely eat meat um, well I never cook meat at home but when I go out that's where I allow myself to indulge in maybe things that I don't normally eat like maybe cheese and and meat and on occasion I'll buy meat but at home but I'll never necessarily make meat at home like 99.9% .9 of the time I think it's usually like once a year once or twice a year at most that I'll cook meat at home. So yeah, so I'm thinking today we will make um, we'll make a salad, which is one of my favorite salads I got into now. Actually, I don't even know if they gave me... Oh yeah, okay, I have the greens that we need for it. So we'll make a, one of my favorite seasonal salads. I call it a seasonal salad because I like to put seasonal fruit in it, um, apples in this case. And we're gonna make a salmon as if you guys follow me on Instagram and also you've seen one of my earlier cooking videos you know that I'm obsessed with shakshuka which is like a Middle Eastern egg dish that you can have for breakfast lunch dinner dessert like it's so good you can eat it anytime so this one is I'm going to kind of make something inspired by it but not necessarily it's going to be a um, fish shakshuka but with zucchinis tomatoes and and yeah we'll see maybe some red peppers we'll just figure it out and then we'll make some like sweet potato mashed sweet potato and um black beans to go on top so let's get started oh my gosh look at this i asked for a zucchini and they gave me the world's tiniest zucchini but, you know, I think that's kind of the fun part of cooking. Most of the time, you know, I love to say, like, use what you've got. I love to cook with whatever I have on hand. And the beautiful thing about cooking, as opposed to baking, is that you really can't mess it up. You know, you as long as you're cooking to your taste buds, you're cooking things that you like to make or things that you like to eat, 
and you really can't go wrong um, you know you just kind of improvise so we have this tiny little zucchini and we're just gonna have to deal with it I mean I was hoping it'd be a little bigger cuz um, but it's okay we'll be fine <laughs> okay <laughs> let's get started okay so here we have some fresh ingredients that we're going to use for our beans um, whenever possible I really recommend to use fresh spices so this is crushed garlic I just crushed like four or five cloves in here with a garlic press I have red onions and this is some cilantro so I'm kind of doing some flavors that I remember my mom would use to um, spice up the beans growing up the only thing that's missing is like a tomato paste to add to the beans but we've got black beans here I've actually already cooked them mostly cooked them so I boiled them for about an hour or so or a little longer earlier so they're already pretty much cooked but I'm I added some more water and let it simmer so that we can add some of the other spices to it and just do, do a final top off now um, let's see yes yeah, so some tricks with the beans the beans can take a long time and if you're not very patient and not you don't want it to you don't want to wait an hour or two for it to boil on high heat just with plain water you can do it or you can add salt to the water but I usually just boil it in plain water but if you don't have a lot of patience for the whole length of the cook, cooking time then I suggest that you soak the beans overnight like just leave it in a pot or a bowl with water overnight in the fridge and then by the next day the water will have soaked into the beans and it'll make it a lot faster to cook the next day or if you don't have time for that or it was an afterthought um, as you're cooking it you can also throw in a little bit of baking soda in the water which will speed up the cooking time by at least 30 minutes but just be careful with baking soda because it's a little bit on the salty side and so if you you know put too much of it it's gonna and then put salt on top of that for your beans it's gonna come out a little salty so my thing is I pretty much try to keep things as simple as possible so I just let the beans work their magic and give it the time it needs you can also use a pressure cooker that's also something you can do but yeah so the beans have just um, been boiled in, in um, water and now I'm just going to like saute these onions a bit and there's really nothing special to the you don't have to worry about cutting the onions perfectly remove it later if you wish or let it or eat it um, just as well when it's ready okay so this is ready and I'll just pour it over into there okay all right and so then you're just going to mix all that stuff in there I'll just let that cook it doesn't really matter I mean it depends on how you like your beans if you don't like them very mushy or something you can make sure not to overcook them but you can't eat raw beans so definitely make sure they're not like hard in any way and yeah so we'll but it's okay if it gets a little mushy I don't care so I'm just gonna let that cook and then in the meantime I'm going to start preparing the fish and the, and the sweet potatoes so let's get started Okay, so now I've cut the sweet potato 
I'm going to boil them today. I usually bake them, but today I'm going to boil them. If I bake them, I try to keep the skin on. I mean, if I'm for any vegetables or fruits that I eat, I try to use the skin because a lot of nutrients are in the skin. I'm not sure about the potato. I'm pretty sure that it's similar, but yeah, I I just kept some of the the skin on there and I've washed them and I've cube them so they can cook a little faster and I'm just gonna put them in the water to boil and I am not adding any salt or anything to the water because with sweet potato you don't really need to go crazy adding salt at all or that much because it has already a lot of flavor and just like a little tip if you are trying to eat a little healthier always try to use the slightly healthier option so if you want to go for like pasta maybe try something that is like not processed like go for yes maybe even rice because rice is natural assuming it doesn't you know it's not like processed from a, a box but go for rice go for potatoes go for quinoa like go for anything else that's like starchy a bit or like you can use as a starch but is just more naturally sourced and if you're gonna go for a potato try to go instead of like a white potato or red potato try to go for a sweet potato which is like packed with vitamin C and it's like so good for you but um, yeah I mean you can it's always also good to change it up so if you have a lot of sweet potatoes you know which is fantastic most of the time go for maybe one day you you know you can have a, a white potato because there's also vitamins in that if you're gonna go for onions I always go for instance for red onions because the darker the color it's usually the more vitamins there are in that fruit or vegetable so instead of white onions or yellow onions I usually go for red but once in a while I mean it, it wouldn't hurt to do a white or a yellow but I always try to go for the vegetable or food that, that has the most nutrient and I always try to go for the food that's the least processed, the most in its natural form and as fresh as possible. So, okay, so we are pretty much done here. I This is the tiniest little pot that I have at the moment right now since the beans are cooking in the other one. So we're just gonna make it work. So I'm just gonna let that boil until it's ready, maybe about 20 minutes or so because I put it in a little too early before the water um, was boiled but that's okay so now that we have the sweet potatoes going the beans going now we're going to work on the fish and then we're pretty much done like seriously so far it's only been about like 20 minutes and that's with prep and everything all right so stay tuned for the fish So now I have this glass container um, which I'm going to use to store pretty much the dinner that I'm going to make and also the salad and the fruit snacks that I'm going to cut up later. But I love this container. I found it on Amazon and I'll just share it in the description box if anyone is interested. But it just has three compartments. It has this like rubber thing around it to keep the any leakage from happening um, and it has like four grips on each side so it's definitely very secure and it's glass so it's reusable good for the environment you can see the food it's pretty and machine washable all that good stuff i always love using glass containers it's just so much better for you and for the environment okay so i've washed all the ingredients that i'm going to use for my salad and i'm easily one two three just going to fill up each section there are three sections so it's kind of really nice also for portion control so normally I'll have like one portion for the day if I'm with a, one portion from my dinner with one portion of something else and that could be like a meal so and of course if you're hungry still you can always do two portions whatever you like but this is a good way to also keep be mindful of your portions I usually pretty much just stick to one portion of each thing because I find that it's enough um, but also if you want a snack later you still have like a little 
snackable portion size. So I've washed everything, so let's go ahead and now just flop it all in. Okay, so this is a mix of spinach and arugula. I normally don't get arugula even though I love arugula. And again, it goes back to what I was saying that normally I'll just try to go for the most efficient source of nutrients. So lately I've really been into spinach. Um, I just love it now in the salad that I'm making, but I felt like spicing it up a bit and they also didn't have just spinach, so that's okay. So we're, we're getting a mix of spinach and arugula, which is also delicious. So I might make like two salad containers, but today I'm just gonna make one and then see how it goes because I don't like to prep too much in advance, like too many days in advance, because then it can go bad or you know maybe I change my mind and I don't want to eat it. So I'm gonna just start with this and during the week I can always like prep a quick you know salad bowl like this and then have it for like three more days, two or three more days. So we've got the spinach and arugula. And then I also chopped up some celery. And we just dump it in. So celery actually has an, I've gotten into celery a lot recently. It just has like a nice little refreshing bite to it. It's kind of like cucumber, but just with a little bit more, I don't know, tang to it or oomph, I don't know. And now I'm throwing in some cherry tomatoes. And cherry tomatoes are, not only are they small, which makes them good for meal prepping, but they also don't really lose their, their flavor, their texture. Um, they don't get soggy like maybe other bigger tomatoes would. So they're perfect for meal prep. And then I just like to take a little piece of onion. If you don't like raw onions in, in your food or you don't like to eat them, that's fine. But I just love raw onions if I can get away with it in my salads. I just think it gives it like a nice kick to it, nice peppery kick to it. And it just goes great in the salad. So I just cut up like a thin, very thinly sliced um, half wedge, as you can see. And I'm just gonna plop it in there. And now the piece de resistance is apple. So I, the combination of apple and celery and the spinach and everything, like peppery, sweet, a little kick to it. It's just, I love it so much. So you can, uh, yeah, put nuts in here too if you want. I'm not gonna go crazy. Nuts can get maybe also a little soggy. So that's something you can put at the day of when you're eating it. So I put about three or four slices um, in each. Mmm, good. And that's it. You have a beautiful seasonal salad that is ready to eat at any point. I don't put dressing on it um, because I don't want it to get soggy, but normally for dressing my go-to is always like a lemon fresh lemon juice, olive oil, some salt and pepper, and that's it. And I always keep, try to have an avocado at home. I don't use the avocado to um, meal prep, but I have it handy so that when I am ready to eat it, I can just cut up a few slices on the spot and it'll give me a little bit of that extra fat, you know, and it'll be extra filling and extra flavorful, nice balance for the salad if I want it. So there you have it guys. How quick and easy and beautiful is that? Okay, now let's do the fish. Okay, so now we have pretty much our ingredients for the fish, the veggies that we're going to use. So we're gonna use tomatoes, a little bit of red pepper, the zucchini, um, I have maybe a lot of garlic here, but you probably wanna use at least like five cloves because the highlight of shakshuka is really garlic and tomatoes so definitely get a lot of tomatoes and um, garlic maybe this is too much maybe that much is enough but we'll see I do like garlic so I'll probably keep it to the side and we're gonna throw in some onions as well and you want to make sure that 
The other veggies don't necessarily overpower the garlic and the tomatoes, which are like the star. So I'll definitely cut up the onions in like small pieces and the peppers as well. And the zucchini though, I do want to feature the zucchini, so I'll probably just like cut them in small slices, um, circular slices, especially because this one is already small to begin with. So there's not too much cutting that's going to be involved. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. side of the cutting board for everything that I'm gonna cook with the salmon it's okay that I have the salmon on here but be careful with cross-contamination now since it's only for me and I don't eat that much fish as I told you and, and meat anyway I'm just gonna I just have a small piece I mean I probably would have gotten a bigger piece but I'd rather have too little than too much of like meat or fish which I definitely then won't eat so I'm just going to cut these into like little chunks. I feel some bones here so I'm trying to work around them. Some bones. Ok, 
Okay, so there we have it. Let me see, that's a bone. That's a bone. when it has bones in it. Um, it is a fish after all. Okay, so there you go. That's good. So I'll be throwing it into the um, veggies soon. But first I'm going to just throw in the zucchini because the last thing I want is to overcook my fish and then it gets all like hard and dry. So that's going to be the last thing I'm going to cook. And I'll just lower the heat and throw it in once the veggies are cooked. If you wanted to make this vegetarian, all you would have to do is not include the salmon. And you can eat it just like that, which I'm sure will be very tasty. Or you can add uh, mushrooms, which has kind of like a meaty texture. If you wanted to add another veggie, or whatever veggie you like. Maybe like eggplants. Okay, so let's grab our fish. And then lower the heat a little. just to get some of the fish a little bit more. Okay. I'll add just a little bit more pepper. So let's let that cook for a bit. Okay guys, so I've let the fish cook for about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe like maybe about 15 minutes or so. Um, a few minutes on each side. I don't want it to overcook. And yeah, it looks beautiful. I just garnished it with some fresh parsley. And now I'm going to move it off the hot stove so that it doesn't overcook. Look how beautiful this is. Gorgeous. Okay. Okay. Guys, so the last thing to do is the sweet potatoes uh, mash. And I just added some um, turmeric, some black pepper, a little bit of salt and maybe some cinnamon because I love the combination of like sweet, spicy, like all these flavors in your mouth. And I wasn't going to add it, but I threw in a little bit of ghee. Um, I just don't really believe in like adding butter, ghee, or like cream or any of that stuff. But, but ghee is actually the healthier um, option if you want like butter. It's like basically strains, it's clarified butter and it just has so much more um, concentrated vitamins and it redu removes a lot of the uh, um, I believe like the the dairy part of it so or don't quote me actually I don't really remember but it's just a healthier version of butter basically okay so I've thrown that in and I'm going to mash it if you want you could put maybe a little bit of uh, non-dairy milk or something I don't really think I, I need to or want to especially because we boiled it it already um, is very tender because of that and sweet potato once you cook it is just generally so tender that it doesn't even need it as you can see look it's already getting like super um, creamy and you know easy and I don't want it to get like too watery yeah it's perfect Alright, and if you don't have one of these like potato mashers, you can easily, easily just use like a fork. It's really that easy. Keep it simple. You know what? Like, I think that's good enough for me. It doesn't take too long. And your sweet potatoes are done. Let's just, yep, mix it around. Voila. Alright, perfect. Okay. Good. So sweet potatoes are done and we're essentially, we are essentially done. That's pretty much it. I'm going to now serve a plate for myself and I'm also going to serve it in the container so that you see how pretty it looks. 
once it's in a container and it's served on a plate. Okay, so again, we have this awesome container and what I'll do is I'll just put some sweet potato um, let's see I haven't tried this yet so it might be like better to separate them since it's like a lot so that's what I'll do because it would be too small of a portion to just um, put everything I was gonna try to put the the fish and the mashed potatoes and the beans all together I tried to do that if I can like just prepare the whole little mini dish but it's just gonna be too much. Okay. Perfect, look at that. All right. Now, that is good. Now, if you recall, we had our beans and I just let them cook until the water came out, like completely, um, what evaporated because for this dish since it's mashed potatoes I don't want it to be uh, watery on the mashed potatoes and who said that you can't put beans on you know mashed potatoes so there you go all right I'm just gonna put it right on top all right. and I don't really like to freeze food too much but with beans it's perfectly fine to freeze it doesn't lose its texture its flavor and it can last a long time if you're not gonna eat it right away and see because I always make too much beans when I make it all right so we have now our little container with the mash um, basically the sides right so we have the mashed potatoes and the beans and if I want a little more beans because I'm not I'm still not hungry I'm full while I'm eating I can always get more from the extra container that I have so that is that I'm gonna let it cool off a bit okay so now I'm just going to go ahead and um, put the fish all right so you see this was like plenty of fish that's what I love like you don't, when I make shakshuka with eggs, I always use like one egg for myself because when you add all the veggies, it just becomes so much. So this is a half pound of fish, which looked tiny, right? Like one serving. But when you add all the veggies, look, that's like enough for three people to eat. So, all right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and toss it in. I'm gonna start out with just like putting one piece in there. And seeing what happens all right so I have enough so I'm gonna put like two pieces oh my god making a mess all right so you see essentially there you have it there's still a little bit more that I can fill this up with, but then I would just put the lid on it. And then I have my fish. I have my sides of the sweet potato and the beans. And then I have my beautiful salad. Um, so that would be essentially a meal and I can mix and match it. So if I just want like a little salad, I'll do a salad. If I wanted just the salad with the sweet potato and the beans, I can do that. If I just wanted to eat the fish, I could eat the fish or just have it with the mashed potatoes or the, just the salad. So whatever um, you want. And again, if you are eating for more people, then you would make a bigger portion. And if you want it to last the whole week, then obviously you would probably make twice as much as this. I use one sweet potato, a half pound of salmon, basically, um, you know, like a... A serving size of salmon one serving size and I didn't mention it I don't think earlier but I always use buy wild-caught fish because it's just 
the you know I believe it's the freshest the cleanest you know and I don't really believe in like farm raised fish so if you can try to get um, wild caught fish and now I'll just show you what it looks like when you plate it and you are ready to eat dinner or lunch or breakfast no judgments and there you have it guys So I hope you guys enjoyed that. As you can see, it's super easy to cook healthy, delicious food that you can enjoy throughout the week that is restaurant quality, but is also guilt free. So, so let me know if you try it in the comments section down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye.